Naomi is not in yet. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone in uh, YouTube world. To my friends in the room, we're expecting Ayun to come in momentarily. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. And we are celebrating 100 days, 100 days wow. of uh, studying the Psalms. Today we are uh, going to be looking at Psalm 85. And uh, there will be some things that, to write in our notebook. So I hope you have your study tools handy. I know I have yes. mine mostly. Let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. You have brought us through your word for 100 days, 100 days in your Psalms that give us guidance, that give us an idea of how we may approach you and uh, how we may think about the world that's going on around us. And I just pray, Lord, that in this session, you will guide my mouth, my lips, you would keep our hearts on track and that you would send us away with something that we can really put into practice this upcoming time forward. So I'm asking this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And uh, in case uh, those who are watching on YouTube now, <laughs> I think I got the opening screen proper. So we are on page 119 in the book. We are actually still in day five. Uh, of that book, <clears throat> but we've split that into two parts so that we could do Psalm 84 the last time, and today we are looking at Psalm 85. So I'm keeping an eye over here to see if um, our friend comes into the room, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have Suji do the reading. Okay. Prayer for God's mercy upon the nation for the choir director of Psalm. Psalm Psalm or palm? Psalm, right? Psalm. I'm confused. Psalm of the sons of Korah. O Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the captivity of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew, withdrew all your fury. You fury. turned away from your fury. A uh, fury. Furry means like a lot of hair. Yeah. <laughs> Fury. Fury. You turned away from your burning anger. Restore us, O oh God, of our salvation and cause your indignation toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not? yourself revive us again that your people may rejoice in you show us your loving kindness O lord and grant us your salvation i will hear what god the lord will say for he will speak peace to his people to his godly ones but let them not turn back to folly Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. Indeed, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its produce righteousness will go before him and will make his footsteps into a way mm. so uh, for a while there i was thinking uh, this is going to be one of those psalms <clears throat> that has a lot of wrath and indignation in it but it ends differently doesn't it 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 ends. I, I don't know why Nayun is not in because oh, she said 20 no, minutes ago she'll be in. Let me. No, you sorry, know what? It's because we're early. We started early. Let me pause the recording. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I was so excited to get started. We got started a little early and left Nayun behind. Here she is now. So thank you for reading, Suji, for us. And um, <laughs> good morning, Nayun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night. Oh, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is good night. It's after midnight. It's almost midnight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we will get started again. Uh, sorry, I started a little early, Nayun, and uh, I forgot that 
<laughs> that that you were going to come in. Not, I didn't forget that you were going to come in, but I forgot that, uh, you know, I should wait. Anyway, so I'm going to have, um, Suji, we're going to read again. I'm going to put everybody's mics on again. Um, uh, because I, I kind of muted everybody so that we can participate who wants to adrian you'll have to unmute yourself it's just that i was hearing a lot of noise from your um keyboard and your your desktop that's okay all right oh, really? so, no no yeah just from adrian's oh okay. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, okay so uh let's let's start again and we'll uh, we have all our study tools um there are yeah so we have some uh, key repeating words so it's always important when we're studying when we're marking these these keywords it's because they're repeating and why do you suppose they are repeated why does god have words repeated because it's important yes exactly exactly and so um it's up to us to discover the importance but first we have to see the words that are repeated so we'll begin at the beginning of 85. Prayer for God's mercy upon the nation, for the choir director, a psalm of the sons of Korah. O Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the cap uh, captivity of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. Okay, so we'll, yeah, so we'll stop there again. Now we're going to do our marking. So um, Adrian, is your mic on? Okay, so uh, help me. I want you to shout out the uh, words that we're marking. Uh, Lord, your and you, and Jacob. And so you. Okay, so the, we have this word restored. Did we ever see restored before? Yeah, we did, but I got to look in the back of my Bible. To find out how you marked it? Yeah. I think I marked it in the same way as I marked salvation. I might have. And now we have Jacob. So we're going to mark Jacob as Israel. <clears throat> Did you find it yet? We did mark it the same as salvation. Okay. All right. So then uh, what did you see in verse 2, Adrian? Uh, you, your people, you and sin. Okay, so we. I, I also mark forgave. I mark that. Um, I mean, it's not the same as salvation, but I always mark it that way because it pops out to me. That's a good one. And iniquity, of course, uh, we mark as sin. Your people, yes, right, I'm going to mark that. And... Um, okay so here's another thing in at the end of verse two we have the word covered which i am also going to mark in the same way as forgave so we got uh, restored forgave and covered and uh, oh there is also a marking for god's people yes. all right Okay, Suji, uh, read me verse 3, please. You withdrew all your fury. You turned away from your burning anger. Okay. Good. So, I, so, so here's, a hint, here's a hint for uh, this English thing. When it's two R's, furry, as in lots of fur. <laughs> but when it's, <laughs> when it's one R, it's fury, fury, fury. So you really pronounce the U, fury, except so like um, instead of fury. I. Yeah, yeah. What is the spelling of fury? Two R's. F U R R Y? Yes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Now, here's another question. You know, uh, so I'm a music teacher, as some of you know. <laughs> and um, one of the things that, that I teach is how to read music. So um, reading music and reading language are kind of the same. And I'm sure it's the same with you reading in your Korean uh, language that um, once we are a little bit more advanced in reading, we don't look at every letter of every word anymore. We see the whole uh, yeah. word 
and 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 in music as well as when we're reading in english or any other language we kind of look ahead a bit so this is i'm not saying this as anything but we um sometimes um to get the the context of a word we read ahead a little bit and say oh so what so furry we okay i don't mean to embarrass you or anything like that but furry furry would not have to do with burning anger so fury is a debt fury in <laughs> in terms in terms of anger okay so there's difference between anger like i can sit here and be anger angry and i can smolder a little bit i can you know mm, feel cross i could feel cross about many things but that's not what fury is fury is as if i open my mouth and flamethrowers came out that's fury so <clears throat> fire big bad anger okay so so what do we have marking here adrian you your you can mark fury yes uh, you your and burning which is an anger yes yeah, so burning anger so fury and burning anger we have been marking anger and uh, when it's burning like that, I put a flame around it, the burning, because it's kind of hot. So here, there's some, but there's something going on in this verse. <clears throat> if you look at what's happened in verses one and two, what, how does how does this psalm open? What is God doing in the opening? He was showing favor to the land and restored. Jacob out of captivity mm -hmm. and forgiving their sin and covering it, covering up, covering their sin. Um, we remember that in the, um, in the account of the Passover, the Lord asked, uh, told the people to put blood over the lintels and the doorposts of their home. So the destroying angel would pass over. That meant that their houses were covered so that the, the, the destroying angel passed them by so that they did not uh, have all their firstborn killed <clears throat> by the destroying angel. And so God covered all their sin that in before Christ. Um, it disconnects they, again and again. Oh, sorry. Well, <clears throat> okay. So before before God forgave the, uh, before Christ came, uh, he gave a covering for sin. Oh, Suji's gone out. There she's coming back. We are having connectivity problems. <clears throat> okay, so in verse 3, what did God do? Withdrew his fury and turned away from his burning anger. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to mark that turn away like i rem like i mark repent did we have repent yeah we do have repent <clears throat> but i i mark that with uh with an underline so i underline the word and then i put an uh, an arrow going back towards the big over top i don't know if i ever did show you that sign that i make for that if i use that sign my green screen will act up so um so I'm going to write the word here, repent, uh, repent or turn. What does it say here? He turned, Ooh, I turned, I turned my page back, turned away. So that's, oops, that's how I'm, I get close. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. yeah. So it's a turning away, turning back. He turned back from his anger, his burning anger, which I think is a pretty good thing. <laughs> That's okay. So now, um, uh, read me verse uh, four, please. She's muted. Oh, you're muted, Suji, are you? Yes. Hang on. Just a minute. Suji, you have to unmute, honey. Do you hear me? No, now I can. <laughs> you you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So read verse four again. Yes, please. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and 
cause your indignation toward us to cease. Mm -hmm. Good. So what do we see in what keywords do we see here? Restore. Mm -hmm. And us. I, I'm marking that like salvation. That's what I did too. Okay. Um, um, God, our. Oh, yes. Salvation. Yep. Your. Now, I, I don't know how you want to mark indignation. Indignation is, uh, is the same as anger, wrath, fury. So okay. in indignation, in, in English, it's the same kind of um, word as, a, as anger. But if I am indignant, I have indignation if you have offended me. Like, right. say, if you call me an idiot, I'm going to be indignant. I am not an idiot. <laughs> Although I am. <laughs> no. 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 Okay, so it's it, it so indignant, but in terms of God, of course, he is an absolutely holy, utterly righteous God, and um he has indignation every day over the 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 way we treat him. And maybe not us personally, but the way people treat him. Okay. So and then us. Yes, us. Oh yes. Cause your indignation toward us to cease. Okay, verse five. Will you be angry of with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Okay, so what do we have in this one, Adrian? Um, you angry. We have a time phrase forever. Uh, you again. Your anger and to all generations. Yeah, that's timing that's too. Time phrase too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, is it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, to me, reading this uh, verse five, will you be angry with us forever? To me, that sounds like a little child. Oh, and yes. and how how we even as adults are like little children when we're in when we're in the punishment room <laughs> or whatever and 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 it seems like forever god's never going to be happy with us which is we're going to find that this is a human reaction um to God as a child to a father, I think, I think. Okay, so uh, let's read verse six. Will you not yourself revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? So, okay, you yourself revive, I would mark as salvation. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're getting a pattern going on. If you, if you think about it, yeah, we're marking those. We've got a lot of that kind of marking in here. Okay, go. Sorry. Um, your on oh, us for us, um, your people. And I'm going to mark rejoice, but I don't know how to mark. I gotta big see smile, big smile. Oh yeah. Big smile. Big hey. smile. Rejoice in you. Okay, Suji, uh, verse seven. Verse seven. Yes, Show please. us your loving kindness, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Mm -hmm. So loving kindness, we that is also in other texts, I think, mourn, uh, or sorry, written down as love and kindness and we often see that also as mercy so we have a special way where we're marking that throughout okay so you've got us your uh, loving kindness 
Lord, us, your and salvation. Good, good. All right. Now, if we uh, in my text and in Adrienne's Bible as well, we have this um, psalm segmented into one, two, three parts. So the first part goes from uh, verse one through three. And the second part starts at verse four, goes to seven. And now we're going to go from eight to the end. So read me verse eight, please. Verse eight. Mm -hmm. I will hear what God the Lord will say, for he will speak peace to his people, to his godly ones. But let them not turn back to folly. Mm -hmm. So Adrian, what do we got here? um god lord yeah so now i wanted to pause there for a minute so when it, it's god the lord and i haven't got my text my um study tools open right here but that's um a particular name um of god so i just underlined the whole thing and marked god the lord as one but you can do what you like it's your bible and then what do we have adrian hold on um he Mm -hmm. peace his people and then his no I'm not sure how you want to mark godly ones well, I think I'm going to mark it like righteous. Okay, that works for me. What else do you see in, in, in the next uh, part of this psalm? Okay, so we've got past godly ones. What else do you see there, Adrian? Um, um, but let them not turn back to folly. Yeah, so how does that line start? But. Yes. And I have a high, I, I mark but a certain way. Yeah, because it is um, it is a conjunction. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> is that a conjunction? Oh, I don't know. It's a, anyway. Yeah, it's a conjunction. It shows a, uh, it shows a little bit of a contrast. So, um. So we started out, he will speak peace to his people, to his godly ones. So that can that can include us, not just uh, if we were marking Israel before, that can include us. Yeah. And then this is a condition. The condition is what? <coughs> <coughs> but let them not turn back to folly. Yeah. So I'm going to mark the them as the righteous ones like I did before instead of as a because it's just because it's the last one in the line before folly. OK, so folly. I marked a sin. Did you? I always mark folly and foolish def, foolishness different because I have uh, studied the Proverbs as well. And the Proverbs are given to make simple and unwise and foolish people uh wisdom to make them oh, yes. and so i mark folly i always have i've marked it in a different way okay so folly is folly is the noun of the same as foolishness so if you're a fool or you're foolish you practice folly yeah. Okay, don't let them turn back. So turn back. So there's that turn back because we use that with the Lord. Let him turn away. But I am going to mark this turn back in the same way as I, I did that. So, or repent. But this is not repent. So it's saying if you're going to be righteous, don't turn back to foolishness. Right. Okay, so we'll go on with verse 9, Suji. And surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Okay. <coughs> Why? What does it say at the end? Uh, that glory may dwell in our land. Yes. 
So when you see the word that, you know that that answers the question why. Okay, so so this is a this is a strong statement. He's making a strong statement because he starts it out with surely. It's like in when Jesus was teaching and he said, truly, truly, I say unto you, truly, truly, or verily, verily, however your script uh, says it. This surely, that means it's a, sh it's, it's a sure thing. It's an assurance. It's going to happen. Um, surely his salvation. Okay. So Adrian, are you finished coughing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was looking, I'm looking for glory. I want to see if I marked it. Yeah, no, we haven't started marking glory yet in our text. Okay. So we'll, we'll just leave that by for now. Um, his mm -hmm. salvation. Mm -hmm. Oh, fear. We mark fear. Yes. And I, I did that whole thing. Those who fear him. I marked that the whole thing as fear <clears throat> but you know in a way i'm going to mark those as the people who are the godly ones <clears throat> calling them righteous so i'm using the righteous sign and when we are marking fear we're kind of doing i i don't know whether you are but i'm kind of underlining it with a wiggly line <coughs> taking fear him that glory me. Uh, um, our, yeah, and our. Then our. Yeah. Now let's see. Did we have something reference to the land, the captivity of Jacob? Some interesting things going on. Okay, verse 10, please. Loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. What a picture that is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So loving kindness and truth have met together oh and righteousness and peace have kissed each other. <laughs> <laughs> so what are what are we marking here, Adrian? Loving kindness. Uh, truth. Mm hmm. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Peace. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do, <laughs> I mark peace with the hippie symbol, peace symbol. I know that that's a, some people say that symbol's not good, but anyway, that's what I do. And of course, um, when I, when I'm reading the scriptures, I always mark the word truth. So when it says truly, truly, when Jesus says truly, truly, I mark the truly because that's truth, true, true. Okay, so verse 11. Truth springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. Mm -hmm. What do we got, Adrian? Oh my, truth and righteousness. Mm -hmm. A very interesting little thought that's going on here. Truth springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. Okay, so let's just think about this for a little bit, just a little bit. When you see nature in the way that God made it, you see that everything fits together perfectly. I mean, the plants get their nourishment from the sun and when it is evening they they give us you know oxygen to breathe so the truth of god is is applying in the laws of nature which he made so truth springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven so you could apply that if I, if you were going to apply that in an earthly kind of way like i just did with the earth then all of these <clears throat> heavenly bodies the sun and the moon and the stars were placed there by god and they're held in place by god and in righteousness so we always have a witness we always have a witness in nature of God, of God acting on our behalf um, to do us good, always. 
Okay, so uh, number verse 12. Indeed, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its produce. Okay, so, okay, there's a funny English thing too. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, I, I I I hate to correct you, but I I think it's so much fun learning new languages. Um, so in English, there there's word produce. So when you produce something as a verb, when you produce it and you make it and you send it forth, it's produce because that's a verb. But when it's uh, when it's the vegetables and fruit or the stuff that has already been made, we call it produce. Oh, really? Yeah. So the, yes. So it's the same, it's the same word, but we pronounce it differently. And so you have to look at the sentence to see whether it is a verb or whether it is a noun. So, so it, it, it's the same spelling. Yes. Nobody, no Korean will know that. Yes, exactly. Well, why would you? This so here, so here, so, so here's the rule. The rule is if it's a verb, it's produce. So the emphasis on the second syllable, produce. But when it's a right. noun, it's produce. No Korean will know that. Yeah, no. This Why is amazing. <laughs> I'm so shocked. I'm well, so there, shocked. yeah, we have a lot of words like that. So, and then you have, uh, uh, okay, so if you have produce, that's usually referring to food. Wouldn't you say, Adrian? Yeah, because you go That's in the gross, you go in the grocery store and you go to the produce section. But if you walk through the rest of the store, you might find uh, boxes of cereal and toilet paper and house cleaner and all of that. And those are products. Um. They're, not, they're not produce. Produce has to do with produce really doesn't have to do with meat, does it? It, it's usually fruit and vegetables and nuts. Isn't that funny? And uh, wow. yeah. So that, I think that comes from the, I think that's a Latin origin of word. Not sure. Okay, so in this sentence, when you're looking at it, in and our land will yield its produce. So its is indicating possession possession of a thing so possession of a thing tells you that it's produce and not produce wow isn't that funny language okay adrian what do we see here uh lord and our okay now uh this is twice now i've seen land our land our land so it, another time when we're, re, we're reading it through, uh, we might um, mark that in a particular way, but we're not going to today. Okay, the Lord will give what is good and our land. Okay, right, our, sorry, I'm just taking my time. Okay, now verse 13. Righteousness will go before him and will make his footsteps into a way. Okay, Adrian, what do we see? Uh, righteousness, him, mm -hmm. and his. Mm -hmm. Do you see how poetic this language is? Make his footsteps. It's talking about all of the goodness of the Lord, isn't it? Yes. His footsteps into a way as if we can imagine an almighty, omnipresent, utterly righteous and holy God with footsteps walking. But it's like, uh, it's like, you know, if you have a long gown on, like a long or, I don't, or a robe or something, when you walk, you have to kick your feet forward so that the robe goes out in front of you so you don't trip on it. Well, I imagine that the Lord is, he's making his footsteps into a way of righteousness. Okay, um, let me just look at what my text says in the eye. I hope you notice that I don't have my glasses with me. So reading is pretty funny. Um, here we are on day, oops, I'm on the wrong page, day five. 
and we've marked this. And now I'm just going to read what it says here. The setting of this psalm by the sons of Korah is hard to determine. So we see that in verse 1, something has already happened. Something has already happened that the Lord showed favor. He Because all of those... All of the verbs in one and two and three that God did are, are past tense. So let's see. It occurs after God has done something for Israel. What? And what does the psalmist ask God to do? In verse four, it starts. Restore us. Mm -hmm. And what else? And cause her indignation to cease. Mm -hmm. And what else? Loving kindness. Show us your loving kindness and grant us your salvation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And revive us. Revive us. Uh, revive means to live again. Again, that's from the Latin word... Uh, Vivo, revive us. So do make us alive again. Why? That the you that we may rejoice in you. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So th so then all right. So this is the. So if you look at this, the first section of this, the first segment of this saw uh, psalm is telling what God did, has already done. And then from four to seven is asking petitions. This is the prayer, asking God for something. And then this is very interesting. This is different a little bit <clears throat> from eight to the end. How would you categorize that? He's making a commitment to God. In verse eight, mm -hmm. what tense are we dealing with in this um, of the of the what time? So it, one to three was the past. Four to seven <clears throat> is the present. Future. Mm. sort of he will yes so he will <clears throat> he will so that that could be purpose that could be indicate purpose but it could also indicate purpose in the future uh, he will speak peace to his people so uh, what what does that um kind of hint at um what what part of the psalm does that refer back to? I would go back to one and two. The restoration? Yeah, one to three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where he withdrew all his fury and anger. Ah, uh -huh. so there's fury and anger that had been going on. Yeah. And he's saying, God will speak peace to his people. Yeah. With the condition that they don't turn back to folly, right? Exactly. All right, there is, there is a, there are a few things in here that um, we could write down in, a, or we could highlight, um, that could be um something for us in the present day to to hold on to what what can you see just a little short phrase maybe the verse 10. Mm -hmm. yeah 
I was thinking back, um, right at verse 9, surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. To me, that really popped out because those who fear him may be like you and I who are not of the house of Israel. But we are believers who have been grafted in through Jesus Christ. God's salvation is near to those who fear him. And there's a reason for God's salvation to be near. What does it say in the rest of verse 9? That glory may dwell in our land. Yes. So have you ever thought about that? That God's glory is shown through the actions and the conduct and the lives and the speech of his people. That when we when we testify to God's goodness in our lives, we are showing his glory. When we when we show um not only the goodness of the Lord, but his protection of us, his guidance, his, um, what else would we say? His provision for us. And when we say, when we, when we admit that, it, that everything that we have that's good is from God, when we tell people that, when we express that, when we live in that way with thankful hearts, that is the glory of God on the earth through us and God forgive us when we are and grumpy <laughs> and grumbling <laughs> yeah I like I like what you said earlier Adrian about um, he he's made a commitment I'm going to hear what God has to say so how do we do that how do we hear what God has to say read the Bible yeah it's in the book it's in the book. So there, there is something very interesting that when you, um, when you read in the, uh, in the earlier books of the Old Testament of God speaking to his people, when he gave the law to Moses, he gave them blessings and cursings. So he gave them promises that were unconditional god said i'm making this covenant and this is my covenant and this is an everlasting covenant but in other places he gave them laws and said if you do this then but if you do if you do sin then something else so I think what this is showing here at, towards the end, 12, indeed, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its produce. So God said that would happen, that if they served him with all their heart and they didn't go aside to any idols or do what the other people, that he would bring prosperity right to the land itself and give the rain. But if they didn't, there would be a curse upon the land and it would become a desert and we have seen throughout history i i've been listening to um amir safati and he was talking about when in the days of would it be the 1800s when mark twain the american writer went to visit israel it was a desert wasteland he could not imagine that people would want to live there because it was a desert wasteland it was not anything. And now uh, God has brought the people of Israel back into their own country that he gave them. And it is turning into a very abundant place because the people there have learned, they've even learned how and devised ways to take drinking water from the air. So so that they can have irrigation and grow produce there. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps into a way. Um, immediately to my mind came the scripture that said, and it's in the Old Testament, and don't ask me where, but you can look it up on Google. <laughs> uh, you will hear 
you will hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. That is the Holy Spirit tells us what way to walk and, and that pleases God and which is he considers righteousness. And so God's footsteps are a way for us to walk in, to behave, to prosper and to prosper others. I mean, when you get prosperous, you can prosper others. It's a beautiful thing that happens. Anybody else want to say anything about this? Well, let me just ask, um, and you don't have to answer this except in your heart. The psalmist says, I will hear what the Lord will say, for he will speak peace to his people, to his godly ones. But let them not turn back to folly. So have you decided that you're going to listen to God? Have you decided that when you see the foolish things that you have done in your life previously, that now you're not going to go that way anymore. You're going to be wise and you're going to follow and walk in the ways of righteousness that the Lord has given. Now, I'm not saying this to be a legalist or to put a heavy burden on anyone, but honestly, God is not going to reward us when we are walking foolishly or when we are being stubbornly rebellious or disobedient. So we should never expect that God is going to bless disobedience. That would not be, bring glory to his name. So how about if we just all covenant into our hearts that we're going to listen to the Lord and that when, when he corrects us and says, hey, that's the wrong direction you're going in, that we're going to go, choose to go his way and not our own or the ways of the world. Let's do that. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word, your truth, that you give us a way to walk in where we can be wise and we can have abundance to share with others, to bring glory to your name. Forgive us, Lord, when we think too small of you and your blessings, when we think too small of you in terms of righteousness, and when we make ourselves out to be more important than we are. But dear Jesus, thank you so much for rescuing us. Thank you for restoring us and forgiving us and covering all our sin. Thank you for turning away from your burning anger. Thank you that we are forever written in the Lamb's book of life because of you. And that we don't have to fear what's going on. We can be like the woman in the Proverbs who has no fear for the future because you have provided for her and you have provided for us and you have made a way for us to be wise and understanding and kind and to live in peace in, and in harmony in this world in which we find ourselves. And so, Father, I pray you'd send each one today who's watching, who's participating. I pray that you would send them home with a blessing, send them away with something uh, to think about and meditate upon in, in our hearts today. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, here we are. We've been recording in Zoom. <clears throat> Don't know what has been with the eCam program, but it seems like this worked better. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for your patience with us as we learn to use the platform and make these recordings. And we really do hope that this is a blessing. And for you people who are looking at this in YouTube world, if you if this has been helpful to you do like it and share it somehow <clears throat> and that way maybe someone else can find some help and some strength so i'm going to say goodbye to our youtube family see you in the next one